Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're going to be looking at the, um, the HID signal reader. We're going to be looking at how to add the HID signal to a Net2 ACU. We're going to look at how you configure the reader and how you configure the Net2 reader. So first of all, we need to log in to the, um, to the HID manager. So let's add your login email details. This is all part of the app. So login details, let's go check its assets as usual and log you in. So now we've got the splash screen. Let's scan for readers. It's found my reader, the HID reader. So let's click on that and then inspect. And now we can have a look inside the reader, how it's behaving, how it's programmed. So it's going to download all its credentials, all its um, settings into the app so we can view them into the HID Manager app. I'm showing this live so, you, so you've got an idea of the time it takes. Seems a lot quicker when you're uh, on site. And there we go. So now we can see the, the information of the reader. It's, it's ID number. I can have an update if I like. I can apply my own templates. Also, we can have a look at how the reader is configured, what it's, um, what it's set up to read. You can see HF and LF, so high frequency, MIFA, LF, proximity. BLE is enabled and um, also OSDP. So let's go to um, custom configuration. Now we need to cycle our power. That means turn it on and off. I would suggest strongly that you just remove the power from the reader rather than powering down the control and powering it back on because you need to do this a few times and you could cause damage to the um, to the reader doing uh, to the controller doing that, giving it spikes. So power down, power up. It only takes 30 seconds or so, and uh, it'll, it will apply. It just shows that you're a genuine user rather than someone stood at the door with a, an app trying to bypass security. So we're downloading our token settings. So now let's see how the um, how it's configured to read credentials. So at the top there where it says credentials, we can click on that. That will take us to the valid formats it's going to read. As you can see here, CS I class is enabled. Deskfire isn't. My Fire Classic is. So let's uh, let's enable the Deskfire because that's the nature of this video. So all the Deskfire options. So that looks fine. So what we do now is once we've done that, we need to apply this to a template. So we're going to add to the template, click on that. And then we're going to save as a template. So save as a template and that saves it to your app. Saves the database to, the, to your app. So click on that, give it a name. So Deskfire, we're going to say it's a Deskfire, Deskfire support. Part of the name of my app is ADI because it's an ADI device. So when it says select a category, um, you just select the, in my case, ADI, and it'd be your business name, and then save. Now, we've saved that to the app. We need to translate that over to the reader. So we're going to apply um, the selected items to the reader. So I'll click on that one. And it's going to send the, the data over. Just again, to prove you're not um, someone trying to hack it, as it were, power down, power up and then it'll start to transmit. And now it's writing that database in. Once you've got this template saved, you can apply it to other readers. So, you know, you don't have to do this full procedure every time. It's just getting you going in the first instance. There we go. So the template's applied to the reader now. We'll test uh, further down in this video. We'll test that on, on the net to make sure it's working correctly.
so with that done um we can say we can tick everything's okay there and we can um so next we need to apply the um, the output how's this output and its data um obviously we're going to change its data to 26 bit oh sorry it says for 26 bit but we're going to but we're just going to make sure it's 26 bit if you wanted you know you could have it as 34 bit if you're doing genuine my first csn or you could do it 26 bit with a site code if you like but let's just stick with um 26 bit now mine's already done so i'm not going to do that procedure again but you would apply you would save it to the template in the same as you did before and then apply it to the device itself while we're here how's it communicating we're going to communicate on weekend and uh, you could do it an OSDP if you're using Honeywell or Vanderbilt or Cantex, something like that. Um, other features, um, optional settings is um, there's a, a device in there called Velocity. And that's a, a, t a new way of checking tampering. Is, is somebody thumping it? Um, so yeah, you get metal tuning, then you got Velocity. So if you want to enable that, it could be quite useful. I wouldn't use it if you're using it in the lift. Um, so that's all saved and applied now. The tokens I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be using the, the Honeywell, the EV2, that's fire card. Uh, uh, what else? Oh, I'm going to be using the, um, the Hikvision uh, EV1, that's fire cards. And I'm going to be using a generic Omnitech MyFair 1K Classic um, MyFair card. So next, we need to go over to Net2. OK, so let's load the Net2 software. We're on the welcome screen. We're using Net2 Lite. Um, let's go to the Doors tab. Just a bit of good practice. If you click on the Doors tab first before going straight into the door, you can see we've got the green tick. That tells us the controller's online and responding. It's, um, it saves you a lot of time trying to configure something and sending the commands to the controller, nothing's happening. You, you you just don't understand why. Because if you go to the main door itself, there's no indication that the door's online or not. So a little tip for you there. OK, so this is my test um, device. I use it for setting up scenarios for customers and what have you. So I've called it main door. It's, we, we have not created door groups. Unlock the door. Um, give free access at no time so it's constantly locked it only opens upon a valid card um so name the reader type what type of reader if it's paxton it's either clock it's probably clocking data but we're doing weekend as discussed so it's a weekend reader keypad not used and um, the token format is 26 bit you'll notice throughout i've been referring to it as everything is 24 uh, 26 bit if you want to um, just press apply if you want to create a new format, you can do. You can click new format and create the format that suits. We'll um, we'll go through that at another stage of um, custom card formats. So that's all set up. And the reader operating mode. Now in this instance, I'm going to set this up as a desktop reader, um, because you can't really test if the device is working if you haven't got a valid token so it's a de so it's going to behave as a desktop reader when i present a token to it it's going to enroll them into the software so let's get the first test card in this case i'm going to use the hikvision the ev1 card present that reader beeps and there you go it's populated with a, a token number a credential so we'll call this a hick oh, not kick hick Vision EV1 uh, department none I've created departments access level all hours all doors valid from today everything's good there add user next let's add the um, the Honeywell the EV2 card there we go we've got a token number and we'll call this one on well, EV2. Um, so that user. 
Now uh, I've got my generic um, Omnitech MyFair card. It's, it's basic, standard, classic MyFair as people call it now. Present that. As you remember, in the Signal setup, we enabled MyFair. So we'll call this Omnitech Classic. Add user. Now for a bit of a as I was looking for tokens, I found some other ones as well, which I haven't mentioned. So these are the Hickvision um, MyFair tokens for the intercom, which, uh, which is interesting. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does. Yeah. So we'll call that Hickvision token. I've just remembered on the other ones, I've not given them access levels, so I have to go back and fix that. Well, I was all doors, add user. And finally, another token I've just found is an ACT. It's a FOB-B token, um, or the Vanderbilt FOB-B, um, EM10T1 or EM10T3 token. Let's see how that one behaves, because this is clock and data, so this should be an interesting one. Oh, there you go, it's valid, so ACT... And if I remember, it is it's a T, it's a C value, so it's an EM ten C three token. Access levels all hours all doors. Add user. Now, if, as I say, when we go back to users, if I look at the Omnitech card, um, I didn't give any access levels, so all hours all doors. Apply that. Um, that one's okay. All hours, Honeywell's okay. All hours, all doors. Apply that. And is Hickvision okay? Hickvision token. All hours, all doors. Okay. So. So no, so now the reader's behaving as a desktop reader. So if we were to go back into the door in question and change this now to a token only reader apply that change and go to events now if, if we present one of these cards let's do the omnitech card we should get uh, access granted and there we go let me get rid of that do that again so we're looking at this top line here at today's time so i'll present it again Access permitted. Wait for the relay to time out. Then we'll do the ACT, the clock and data token. Again, access granted. Next, we're going to do the Higvision, the EV1 Desfire. All good. And finally, the Honeywell, the EV2 Desfire. And there we go. So it's a lot of generic tokens, EV1, Deathfire, MyFair, EV2, even Clock and Data and Classic MyFair, all configured in the Signal Reader and all working with um, a Net2 ACU. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and project teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.